Good evening and welcome to our virtual sixth form open evening today, 16th of November 2020. It's the second time we've done a virtual open evening. And of course, you'll be aware this evening is all about joining our, uh, our infamous post 16. I'm just going to do a few introductions first and then talk about how the evening is going to pan out because there's quite a lot of uh, things going on. I'm sure you've got lots of questions to ask and most importantly, we want to let you guys know what you need to do um, if you've got any further questions. So introductions first. Um, I'm going to start off with the most important people here this evening, our students. We've got Aidan Pancholi from Year 12. We've got Eve Coop from Year 13. We've also got Head of Year Matt Dover, Head of Post 16 Louise Holback, and Head Teacher Simon Brown. So this evening we have some plan questions and thank you to those of you who are watching who have sent questions in because that really helps us to, uh, to make the most of the evening. And we'll be going through some of those first. We then have some videos uh, as we go through the questions that are gonna help you understand a little bit more about the post 16. As all of this is going on, please feel free to use the comment box to put in some live questions. We will either then respond to those uh, and one of us in the room will be able to do that on the video, or we do have one of our colleagues working on the, uh, on the comment box who might be able to respond to you uh, straight away. If you've got any questions that are not answered by the end of the evening, then please do use the, uh, the email post16 at bosworthacademy.org.uk. I think that goes through all the, uh, the kind of the plans and the logistics of this evening. So we're going to start off with some of the plan questions, and I'm going to start off with the uh, head teacher Simon Brown, who's going to talk about how we apply for A levels here. Thank you, Ben White. Um, good evening, everyone. Great to see so many viewers here for our virtual sixth form evening. So why, why do you need, to, when do you need to apply for A-levels? This academic year was the question. Um, you can apply for courses from now. I would say, first of all, make sure you do all of your research really carefully into which A-levels you wish to choose or BTEC that we offer. Um, application forms are on our website, so please look there. Um, be mindful that your own school will have its own internal deadline, I would think, for when they would like you to complete applications for. Our deadline here at Bosworth Academy is at the end of January. Um, what we will then do from all of those applications we receive, we'll then get back in touch with students and we'll invite you for a guidance meeting. And that's usually around March. We'll, we'll see how, how things are with this pandemic at the moment and we'll see whether that's in person or virtual. Um, so end of January for any applications. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, the next question was about whether subjects need to be linked. And Head of Post 16, Louise Holbach, is going to tackle that one. Yeah, the question that's come in is, do subjects need to be linked? For example, if you wanted to do maths and a science, can the third be music or PE? And do you need a GCSE in the subject? Well, it's a really good idea to go and research the career that you want to move into. You can find out a lot about the courses that are on offer and what specific A-levels you need to study those courses. So that can form the start of the research process. From then, you need to think about the subjects that you're going to enjoy and what you're going to be good in. A-levels are hard and studying a subject that you're not going to enjoy is going to make it even harder. So make sure that you really do that research first. Okay, thank you, Reese. I'm now going to ask uh, Head of Year Matt Dover to talk about the specific requirements of doing A-levels here at Bosworth Academy. Okay, thanks Ben. Um, the question is, is, are there specific requirements in terms of grades in order to study A-levels at Bosworth Academy? Um, yes, there are. All students who want to study any Level 3 courses, whether it's at Bosworth Academy, will have to get a minimum of a Level 5 in English Language and Maths, together with three other Level 5s. Um, outside of that, there are obviously uh, very important subject specific requirements, but all of those details can be found on our website. And so I'd encourage you to look at those. Okay, brilliant. Still on the, uh, the subject of requirements, I'm going to go back to Head of Post 16, uh, Louise Holback, who's going to talk about those core subjects. Yeah. Louise. One of the questions that we've had is that if I don't pass English but meet all other requirements, will I be accepted providing I retake my English alongside the A levels? Well, English language is required for the majority of courses, so achieving a five in English language is quite important. However, if you don't quite meet the particular grade requirements for certain subjects, 
you should contact the Post 16 team as soon as you receive your results. We can then arrange a meeting with you to talk about your options and how you can be supported. Uh, we have had students in the past that have um, resat GCSE English or Maths, providing that they've met all the other requirements for subjects. Okay, thank you, Louise. Uh, the next question, I'm going to tackle this one, and it's around school transport from the Hinkley area and how much it costs. So at the moment, we do have transport from the Hinkley area, currently priced at £725 a year. Students who are in receipt of free school meals can apply for a transport at a reduced rate, and post-16 students that may be eligible for a bursary um, could, uh, could also look at getting a discount. Uh, it's important to add that transport costs are reviewed annually, so it might not be exactly uh, this amount. But if you have got any more questions about transport in particular, then please direct that to the email transport at bosworthacademy.org.uk. I'm now going to pass on to one of our uh, post-16 students in, in Year 13E, who's going to talk a little bit about the electronics that might be required when studying here. Um, so the question we got was about if we need to bring our own laptops into school. Obviously it's an option if you wanted to, if you wanted to bring your own laptop in. Most students don't because it's an extra thing to be bringing with you. We do have places where you can charge them, however. Although most students choose to use the computers that are supplied within school, so we have specific areas for these. For example, we have the Oaks, we have the Library, and then we have computers within the English and Science corridors. Um, we do tend to use Google a lot, so this is quite good if you want to do some work in school and then outside of school as well, it's very transferable. I'd probably add that sometimes you might want to look at some digital resources when you're actually in a lesson. So you can, if you're accessing that on your phone, it might be a bit small sometimes. So just for like convenience and actually being able to access fully the resources, you might want to bring like an iPad or a laptop, uh, just so you can act pro access it properly. That's brilliant. Thank you, Evening. Thank you, Aidan. Um, next question was around sociology and psychology and, and who the teachers are. Um, here at Bosworth Academy, uh, we offer both of those subjects and it's teachers and members of the humanities faculty that deliver those courses at A-level. I'm now going to pass back to uh, Head of Year, uh, Matt Dover, who's going to talk about the, uh, where the students get the A-levels that they want. So we always try to accommodate uh, students' choices. Um, last year, I think we were 98% of people's first four choices were accommodated. It is inevitable always that there's going to be some subject clashes and in those very rare circumstances, um, we are we encourage we, we we do what we can to rearrange things. That's why we encourage everyone to what, make sure that they're opting cho choosing five subjects that when they initially uh, make their application, and they they are chosen in order of preference. So we can normally guarantee people to get their first three and hopefully their first four. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you, Matt Dover. Uh, another transport-related uh, question um, with regards to deposit and concerns if students don't get the grade and therefore don't come to the school. We do ask for money up front because we as a school, and this is quite rare actually, is we contract the buses ourselves and this is to help us plan the routes around our students and make sure that we get the best price possible. But of course, if there is any reason that a deposit is paid and then a student doesn't make it here in September, that money will of course be repaid. Um, we go back to, to Matt Dover, and it's kind of related to the timetable again, but it's related to that average class size. Matt? So our average class size really depends on the popularity of the subject. Um, the average class size in, in this year is around about 15, but there are some subjects, some classes which are bigger than that and some which are smaller. Okay, fantastic. Uh, next question, I'm going to go back to head teacher uh, Simon Brown, who's going to talk about personal study periods and how many students get. Yes, yeah, so often, often a frequent question we get that. It's a, um, we run a two-week timetable. We have 25 periods during week one, 25 periods week two, so that's five lessons per day that we can operate. Um, each of our A-level subjects is 10 periods over the two weeks. So, you know, you probably likely to have five one week, five the next week. Um, and then that's a good offer of 10 one hour periods. I know that some schools, some six forms offer eight or nine. So we do offer the 10. One of those periods um, 
is a period that we encourage independent study where the teacher sets work for period 10 and students are expected to get on with that work in their classroom. Um, and how many lessons might you get as study periods if you are taking four subjects that then equates to roughly you'd be doing four out of five lessons a day. So probably approximately one study period each day. But that will vary. Some days you might have five lessons, some days you might have two study periods built in. I don't know whether it might be useful for Aidan and Eve to maybe give an example of what their days may look like. Aidan? Uh, yeah, uh, firstly I only do three A-levels. So for example today I only had two lessons, I had three study periods. So yeah, it just depends on what subject you're doing, if you're doing three or four. But then obviously tomorrow I've got five lessons. So like you said, it just depends on the day. Thanks, Aidan. Um, and then I do three subjects. I've only ever done three. So I um, normally have um, three subjects a day depending. And I tend to tailor those study periods to what I'm doing that day. So if I've got a textile-based subject throughout that day, I tend to stay in the A-level room and just get on with practice. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I'd probably advise as well, maybe like, you know, at the start of year 12, you think, oh, I've got study periods, you know, I can chill out a bit, maybe I can play some cards or something. I would advise that you don't do that because just uh, how much work that you actually get from A levels it is a huge jump from GCSE. So, like, stop right from the start of year 12, you want to be spent spending your study periods actually studying right. and getting on top of the work that's being set. Okay, one of the questions you had, and it is linked to, uh, to study periods, um, and I'm going to go uh, to, to Eve in, in year 13. Does that mean students can go home? Uh, no, so the study periods are specifically designed for independent learning, whether that be revision, homework, extra reading. It's just a, enabling you to um, adapt and, and um, prepare yourself for further studies as well. Um, so in year 12, you are expected to come into school at quarter to nine, so 10 past three every single day. Um, obviously this differs from schools, but we personally believe that that allows you to grow and develop those, re re those um, revision techniques alongside having teachers there to, to support you. Um, and then in post 16, we are allowed three study periods a week, um, so either in the morning or in the afternoon, where we are allowed to go home and um, work from home independently, which then again prepares you for university. I think you mean in year 13. Yeah, sorry, yeah, in year 13. Okay, uh, that's fantastic. Um, we've actually got a brilliant video on a day in the life of, but before we do that, just a quick question about um, health and sports related qualifications, and then we'll get that video about the day in the life. So most in sport students interested in studying sports related courses at university choose things like PEA level, often as alongside biology, and psychology is also a popular subject for that particular pathway. For students who are involved in sport outside of school at a high level, we also have an, an elite sport programme, so an ESP, elite sport programme, um, and these students are mentored and supported by Steve Hall, who works across the life map, and that's making sure that we're supporting those students with their elite sport, with all of the training um, and the, the fixtures and having to travel around the country, but at the same time making sure they get their support on their academic studies. But as I said, I think now is the perfect time to go to this video around a day in the life at Post 16 at Bosworth Academy. Hi, I'm Joe and this is just a quick typical day in the life of a Bosworth Academy Post 16 student. First, I wake up and have breakfast, obviously because it's the most important meal of the day. Then get ready for school and head to the bus stop. Now, obviously this is different for people that live in the area or can easily just get a lift to school. But I get to school about 8.20 from the bus and from there I go to the Oaks as this is the usual meet up place with friends. You can get some work done before school starts or just chill, but I'm sure you will find your own meet up spot anyway. First period starts at 8.45 and lasts for an hour until 9.45. And at 9.45 you have tutor. Now at tutor you will receive any information you might need, whether this is a change to school life or careers advice. Tutor isn't that tense though. You can catch up with friends and always remember that you can talk to your tutor about whatever you want. They are there to support you. And tutor finishes at 10, giving you a 25 minute break time. And at break you can chill wherever you like, but remember that other year groups have lessons at this time, so it's more like you can chill wherever you can. The canteen is open and this is also a time you can go and fill up your cash on the system. After break there are periods 2 and 3. 
period 2 goes from 10.25 until 11.25. The third period goes from 11.25 until 12.25, running right until lunch. Now this is probably a good time to mention study periods. In post 16 you will be introduced to study periods. This is where you don't have a lesson but you can use this time to do anything you like and anything you think is necessary. Remember you can have more than one study period in one day. For your study periods you have to sign in at the Oaks or attendance but you can find a place in the school that is free like a classroom but places like the Oaks and the Compass are there for you to quietly study in. There are a lot of options but don't worry you will find the place that suits you best and you can also spend your study periods with friends. After the third period there is lunch and like with break you can go anywhere that is free. Somewhere like the social room is a good place to be as this is one of the few places in the school that is exclusively for post 16 students. Therefore, you avoid all the youngsters. Obviously, you can still use this time to do work, but you can also find somewhere in the school that is suitable for you. When lunch ends at 1.10, you will have another two lessons, period 4 and 5. Period 4 ends at 2.10, and then period 5 starts, and then your school day will finish at 3.10. Another thing we have at Bosworth Academy are 10th periods. You will have a 10th period for each lesson once a fortnight, and you can look at this like a study period except this study should be dedicated to that single subject and you will usually have a designated room for this. A thing to remember as a post-16 student is that you are in higher education. Your teachers will see you as peers and it's good to remember that they are always there to support you. So this being a day in the life, but I guess more of an outline of what your day will involve as a post-16 student. Hope it helped! We are back and we have lots more questions to uh, to get through i'm going to go back to uh, head of uh, uh, head of year matt dover who's going to talk about whether you can apply for more than one college so i've actually got a couple of questions here which are if you apply for a sixth form but happen to get an apprenticeship in the meantime can you cancel your place at sixth form first of all which the answer is yes of course just uh, of course you can just make sure you let your sixth form provider know whether that's us or someone else and secondly, can you apply for more than one sixth form college? And the answer to that is again, yes, absolutely. We'd actively encourage you and hopefully uh, your, your high school will be going through the emotions and this process with you at the moment of making your post-16 applications. Um, normally you'd apply to at least three providers and the advice should be along the lines of, well, aim for one aspirational, one um, middle of the road if you like and one which is a backup there just in case everything goes wrong which hopefully it won't all right thank you matt something that makes bosworth academy sixth form so unique is the number of subjects that we uh, we ask students to choose so louise hold back why, why do we ask for four subjects we ask for four subjects because we believe that it gives students a lot more options in the future universities and employers will only ever ask for three a-level subjects, but we believe that by asking students to select four initially, that gives them a little bit of scope to try different subjects, to see what they enjoy, to see what they're going to be good at. Um, ideally, we'd like students to carry on for the whole of year 12, but um, we understand that throughout the year, students will find that one area is perhaps more of a strength than others, and that they might decide at the end of year 12, or slightly earlier, following some testing, um, that they want to drop one of the A-levels. That gives them an informed decision about which um, subjects to continue with and which subjects they don't want to carry on any longer. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Louise. And with that in mind, you know, the reason, the rationale behind uh, choosing four subjects, Louise mentioned universities and life beyond Bosworth. It's a great moment and opportunity now to introduce our second video, uh, which is uh, around what life or what can happen after Bosworth Academy. Hi, I'm Luke Beck and I'm an ex-Bosworth Academy student now studying radio and television production at the University of Salford. I'd say the first thing about Bosworth Academy is they definitely set you up for the future. When it comes to UCAS and sending off a university application, the school will help you in every stage. When it comes to filling in details about yourself, writing a personal statement and then finally sending off your university application. Not only did they do that, but they also support you giving you events to go and have a look at universities. They also allow you to sign out for a day to go to open days and explore different universities. They encourage you to go and explore. With me, I didn't really know which career path I wanted to go into. 
Um, I, I knew that I liked the subjects that I was doing and so therefore my teachers definitely helped me and told me which career would be best for me and hence why I'm here studying radio and television production as this is definitely a career I want to go into. Another thing about Bosworth Academy is that it eases you into A level. It doesn't seem like too much of a big step up from GCSE to A level. Content wise in your, court, in your classes will feel different but the way that you study and the way that you're given study periods to study as well makes it so much easier and it doesn't feel like too much of a step up. It definitely set me on the right path. It's made me learn a lot about myself, it's made me learn a lot about my subjects and my career but not only that but it set me up for life. It's allowed me to talk to people on a personal level and get to know new people and I guess it set me up for things that I wouldn't even have imagined from post 16. Okay, just one example of where Bosworth Academy can take you, uh, a great input from, uh, from ex-student Luke Beck there. I'm now going to uh, pass over to Head of Post 16, Louise Hongback, who's going to talk a little bit more about the Oaks area. You can see the logo down there in the, in the bottom of the screen. But what is the Oaks all about? So the Oaks is a school within a school. We are a sixth form college, but we are in the main school. Lessons are taught around the academy but um, the Oaks is an area specifically for post-16 students. We've got a study area there, we've got some classrooms based in there, and we've got a social area. Students can use that area to um, have their taught lessons, but they can also spend their time down during their study periods, whether they choose to focus and work quietly in the study area, or they might choose to use the study facilities in the social area and we've got um, connection points for students to use their um, laptops and um, electronic devices in there. We also have um, our admin assistant, Leslie Corden, she's based down there to provide support and guidance for students throughout the day should they need any help with the day-to-day -day, um, coming in, going out or lessons or any kind of support that they might need. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Now I'm going to go back to some more of the specific questions that we received uh, prior to the evening. And I'm going to go back to head teacher Simon Brown, who's going to talk a little bit about options and whether they can be changed. Yes, I mean, the changing options. We, we do hope that the whole process you've gone through now of trying to decide which subjects you want to, to study at sixth form, really, really important. You're going to spend a lot of time doing that, I'm sure a lot of research. And what you need to be doing is looking at, you know, what are your future aspirations so what what kind of qualifications do you need to progress to that next stage or to that career and um, research that carefully and um, if you're not sure then do choose subjects that you love that you know that you're going to enjoy for the next two years if you do then decide that you wish to change we'd all we'd always say consider that carefully because you've spent so long researching and making that choice that you shouldn't just decide um, you know, within a, a few days that that's no longer what you want to do. So think about it carefully. Um, if you do think something's very wrong and you've made the wrong choice, then you need to tell us straight away. So if you've applied for courses by the January deadline, the end of January deadline, and you change your mind, you just need to get back in touch with Bosworth Academy as soon as you've changed your mind and let us know. Um, we will then look to change you to the subject that you'd like to do, but that will depend on, you know, has the class has the class already filled up? Has that subject already filled up? Have you got the right qualifications to do that, and so on? Um, but we will always look to see can we fit you into that choice. Um, the people who choose those courses from the very start, we always say they're the first ones to be given that place, and it's always subject to achieving the entry requirements that um, Dr. Dover talked about earlier. Um, at the beginning of the term, if you need to change courses once you've started, we do ask you to talk to all your subject teachers, um, to talk it through carefully with them, and then you'd meet with your head of year, or you'd meet with Mrs Holbach, head of post 16. Thank you, Simon. Beyond those options and those A-level subjects that you do, 
Uh, there's so much more that we do here at Bosworth Academy in developing young people to kind of move forward into university and, and jobs. And when we talk about developing student agency, I'm now going to pass over to, to Eve, who's going to talk about some of the things that we do beyond those options, beyond those subjects, to make sure that we're developing great citizens for the future. Eve. Um, so in our tutor programme, we cover a range of things. Our tutors are, tend to be groups um, based around the subjects you're doing. For example, I do textiles, so I'm in a art and design based tutor group. We cover lots of different things in the 15 minutes that we see our tutor for every day. And then we also have special time with our teachers in, in enrichment, is that? Yeah. yeah, in enrichment times, which tends to be every two weeks or round about that, where we then cover things like talks with universities, we talk with professionals, just to increase our transferable skills for the future. Um, for example, in tutor time in year 12, I tended to cover a lot of financial skills. We looked at um, things like cooking, we looked at politics, and then more recently in year 13, We've also looked at how to create a personal statement for university. Our tutors really, really guide us through um, the, the process and help us do that. And then the, the tutors also tend to read out what enrichment activities are available, so a scheme that we offer. And then they'll also tell us about work experience and things that we can put onto our personal statement and give us life experience. Okay, Eve, are you okay just to talk a little bit more about the extended project qualification in, in terms and link to that enrichment opportunity? Uh, yeah, so we offer a range of enrichment activities which aim to improve, again, our transferable skills. Um, so, for example, we offer enrichment activities such as um, the student voice, we offer things such as uh, mentoring GCSE students, lunchtime duties, and helping out during open days. These are all things that you can put on your personal statement to make you stand out as a student. Um, these, in, these are encouraged because obviously they offer you life experience as well. Um, we then also offer something called EEP2, which is an extended project qualification of which you get to choose a topic that you're really interested in and do independent research on that. So this um, really helps. So when you do, if you do end up going to university, you do a dissertation sometimes, of which this will really help with those skills. And the EPQ is favoured by lots of universities, and it tends to reduce your grade, grades that you need for those the universities tend to be applying to. That's brilliant. Thank you. And as I said, that's all part of our kind of ethos of developing student agency and making sure students are prepared for that next step. I'm now going to go back to our, our post-16 students um, and ask, uh, I'm going to ask Aidan first in, in year 12 um, what his favourite subject is and why. Um, I'd probably say my favourite subject is geography. Uh, I honestly just find the subject really interesting. Like We're learning about actual real-life issues that are happening across the world. Um, so, so for example like development and like globalization these are things that are like actually happening and they're actually like quite important to our lives and stuff so geography it gives you like a range of skills so the things that you learn in geography you can actually go on like and use them in your life for like to actually change something for example like you learn about climate change and stuff like that and uh it's really important to like how life is now uh, learning about that side kind of stuff, so you can actually make go into the world and make a difference. Um, okay, thank you, Aidan. And, and the same question to you, Eve. Um, I think if you were to have asked me when I was in year 12, I would have definitely said media, because I came in from GCSE really enjoying the course, and the course is very similar. But then now, as I've gone through and learned a lot more about all my other courses, I'd say I much prefer English language. Um, obviously, I'm still enjoying media and art, my other subject, but English language has just given me um, kind of an insight into what I can do after school. Um, it's kind of shown me all the opportunities of which media did show me to begin with, but English has now allowed me to expand on something that I'm really enjoying. So going through all the different frameworks and modules and just learning about the language that surrounds us. So, yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. So Eve and Aidan have given us a, a little bit of an insight to two subjects there, geography and English. And just a reminder that if you wanted to find out a little bit more 
about all of the other subjects that we have on offer here at Bosworth Academy, please do go on to the website. My colleagues have worked really hard at putting together lots of information, information they would have usually shared at an open evening, being able to talk to parents and students, but they've packaged that all into to videos and to information on the website. And that will give you everything you need to make the informed decisions in the next couple of months about your journey beyond post 16. That brings us to the end of our planned questions. To finish the evening, we've got a couple of videos that really underpin the ethos and the values of the, uh, of the academy. And like I said at the beginning, if you've got any further questions, then please do use the email post16 at bosworthacademy.org.uk. We very much appreciated your attendance this evening. Apologies once again for that technical uh, hitch, but it's been really pleased to see lots of you staying on with us and listening to those planned questions and learning as much about the Academy as possible. Have a very pleasant evening and enjoy these videos to finish this live event. Thank you. At Bosworth Academy, our mission is to have a relentless focus on our children. We are an extraordinary school with unique values. We believe that no student should underachieve and we do everything we can to help our students realise their dreams, go way above and beyond their ambitions. We don't believe that what a student can achieve, their potential is defined by where they live, um, where they're born, what their background is, what their ethnicity is. Every child can achieve amazing things. Our growth mindset culture is about developing that understanding and belief in your own qualities and also understanding that these can be improved by listening to feedback, by challenging yourself, by practicing and by learning from mistakes. All of those can develop any child. Our staff are determined to ensure that no student will underachieve. That's a very powerful statement and, and a very brave one for school to make, but we must ensure that not one single child underachieves. To enable that, we provide for our staff a world-class programme of professional learning, making sure that we learn from the best international research and studies, and we put that into practice in our own learning and teaching approaches in our classrooms. Our young people can make such a difference to the world, especially during these changing times. And that's why our education is deeply rooted in strong values. We aim to prepare our students to confront the future with real imagination and creativity. Our teachers will really look to light that spark to get students really excited about learning so that we can find the passion that's within every learner. We focus on global competencies, which we call the six C's. And the six C's are there to help prepare our students with the skills for what they're going to encounter in their lives and when they go on into employment. Achieving great results is, of course, really important. But a student achieving great results but not leaving with the ethical skills that we truly believe in, we would see ourselves as a school failing. We want our students to be amazing citizens with those great qualifications, ready for the next step of their journey. At A-star and A-grades, over 30% of our students achieved those top grades. 60% of students achieving A star to B, well above the national average of 52%. We've been recognized as a school for over the last three years, being well within the top 20% of six forms or colleges in the country. Year on year, our six form students achieve amazing outcomes. They progress onto prestigious universities such as Oxford and Cambridge, and many of them moving on to Russell 
group universities, or even universities around the world. We are so proud of our students. Many of them return to tell us about their exciting journeys in life, and they pass on, they transfer those amazing stories and skills on to the next generation of Bosworth students. At Bosworth Academy, we truly strive for excellence, and together we achieve. At Bosworth Academy, our mission is to have a relentless focus on our children. We are an extraordinary school with unique values. Our young people can make such a difference to the world, especially during these changing times. That's why our education is deeply rooted in strong values. We believe that student achievement is more than just academic success. Our focus on the six C's and global competences prepares students for life after school. We provide a range of support to enable our students to achieve their aspirations. We provide for our staff a world-class programme of professional learning, making sure that we learn from the best international research and studies and we put that into practice in our own learning and teaching approaches in our classrooms. Our teachers will really look to light that spark to get students really excited about learning so that we can find the passion that's within every learner. We aim to prepare our students to confront the future with real imagination and creativity. We are in the top 20% of sixth form providers in the country and all our teachers are subject experts with high expectations. At Bosworth Academy we truly strive for excellence and together we achieve.